Welcome back to another episode of Light the Fuse. Drew Taylor here, once again, joined by Charles Hood. Hey! And uh, we're the only Mission Impossible podcast on the internet, and I think you're going to see why after this episode. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We are talking about the spoofs, Mission Impossible spoofs through the years. Yes, through the decades. Through the decades. I think a lot of this is based around how easy it was to license the music when after the show was off the air. Yeah, I think part of it is that. I also think that just in general, the show has so many iconic elements that they've just become part of the pop culture, part of the culture. Right. I mean, it's... Even if you've never seen an episode or a movie, you still know what it is. You can probably still hum the theme song. It's really a lot of today is going to be listing a lot of the things that have parodied Mission Impossible over the years, and you just see how prevalent this has been in the last 50 years over all this stuff. And it's uh, a way of keeping that alive in between movies, in between TV series... So you think about, oh, there were two shows and then there were the movies sporadically, but it's really been a part of pop culture beyond just the literal text itself by all of these references and interpolations and spoofs. Yeah, I mean, we're, this is really just grazing the surface. Yeah. I mean, we've put together a list here of, of several ways that some different elements of Mission Impossible have been parodied, but we are just barely scratching the surface. Yeah. There, it's, I mean, there are references. These are just some of the like the more... The bigger name, I think, yeah, more widely. And, and I'm now. sure we're missing a lot of them. I mean, you yeah. just said the other day you were you saw a SpongeBob did one. That yeah, we, we didn't catch that, but you just kind of came across. Yeah, it, on it was TV. while while we were texting. I had it on uh, for the dog, and and there was this, a whole Mission Impossible spoof about how, yours is your mission. Should you choose to accept it? There were spy right. elements. I mean, it, it's crazy how it's everywhere. Yeah. The the just that phrase your mission should you choose to accept it has been featured in so many things over the years, uh, like you just saw in SpongeBob, and it was in various movies and TV shows. Meatballs Part Two in the '80s. It was on ER in '96, which is the same year the first movie came out. Oh wow! Uh, the Magic School Bus in '97, which was big from our childhood. Uh, the American Office in 2008. Suits in 2013. That's okay. your favorite show. That's my favorite show. Yeah. <laughs> Big Suits guy. <laughs> um, Parks and Rec in 2014. Uh, General Hospital in 2016. Thor Ragnarok. Jeff, where, where, Jeff Goldblum apparently says it in that. i gotta, I got to watch oh, again to oh, see. Oh, yes. I just had the, it on this morning. Is he the that's Grandmaster? Right. Yeah, the Grandmaster. He says your mission should you choose to accept it. So that's just people bringing up that phrase for what, Mission What Impossible. is your favorite from your Parks mission. and Rec? Though? So the, the one from Parks and Rec I think is really funny. Chris Pratt says your mission should you choose to accept it is to accept the following missions. <laughs> Which I think is really great. That's great. Um, but there, you know, the other sides of, I mean, just the just the music using the Mission Impossible music, which is obviously very uh, iconic uh, for a character sneaking around or yeah. doing some kind of mission, or even characters humming the the Mission Impossible theme. Okay. And like you said, over the years, this might be because it was cheap to license, or maybe it was Paramount titles that were. Yeah, licensing I see a it. lot of these. Like Lucy was Paramount. So, yeah. So yeah. He, here's Lucy was from 1968. So this is two years after the show original show premiered. Uh, Lucille Ball, who was a producer on the original show, Desilu, yeah, did the original Mission Impossible series. Her show at the time, Here's Lucy, used the music as a as a spoof. Uh, Sanford and Son in the '70s did it. Airplane Two, uh, The Simpsons have done it a couple of times. Doogie Howser did it a couple of times. Okay, <laughs> um, uh, Rugrats from '92. Uh, so this um, is all still before the first movie. Yes, and then I love this, but Wayne's World and Wayne's World Two use it a combined three times. Oh wow! Did you um, figure out which version was? Yeah. There? So in Wayne's World Two, they're using the. It sounds like the original show. Okay. But what's awesome is that Wayne's World One, the which uses it twice, uses the eighties theme. Wow. So the Lalo's cool. eighties theme from the show that was in eighty eight, eighty nine. Mm-hmm. Is is used for the for it's like Garth he's like going to his car to get he gets like gadgets, he gets a device yeah. to like break into this uh, I think he gets kicked out by a, a uh, bouncer by a bouncer yeah. yeah and so then he goes in, and then they use it again near the end of the movie so so yeah uh, wow the first Wayne's World uses it twice and it's the eighties theme I love that Homeward Bound the Incredible Journey you okay know, you know that I'm a big fan of dog movies I do do you so, remember where this was I haven't seen that movie since I was a kid yeah you know I'm a big Benji fan so I yeah. I, I rewatch all the Benji movies all the time it sounds like <laughs> you need to rewatch this. I need to rewatch Homeward Bound and see where they used it. Uh, Any Animaniacs, of course, which uh, loved as a kid, um, used it. Uh, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, of course, when he goes and sneaks off into the oh, mansion. Oh, Uno Cares mansion, yeah. Yeah, and he goes and tries to go find Snowflake the dolphin and ends up finding the shark. But when he sneaks off, he does that. It's a very big movie for my childhood, Ace Ventura. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, there was a Keenan and Cal episode that did it in 96. All right. Uh, D3, The Mighty Ducks. Nice. That 70s show did it. And uh, Shrek 2, I guess, does a they light a fuse and do the theme. Oh, wow. Apparently. I don't remember. I haven't I seen it since either. theater or yeah. something. Uh, there's a 30 Rock episode where I think Alec Baldwin's assistant... I forget his name now. Oh, the so really funny. nerdy guy? Yeah, yeah. He, he's doing some sneaking around. He's humming the theme to himself. Um, and then Paddington, the first Paddington movie, uses really? the theme. Okay. Which, uh, those Paddington movies are really great. Yeah. Um, shout out to Paddington. Yep, yeah, shout out to Paddington. We'll, we'll do a whole podcast. We'll start a new podcast on just Paddington. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's just the music, and that's just a, a not even a full list. Yeah. Of the, over the decades of people using that theme for funny scenes. Um, there's also the phrase, this message will self-destruct in five seconds. And that's, you hear that everywhere. It was back in 1970. It was in Green Acres. Wow. It was in, I watched uh, Green Acres a lot as a kid. Really? Yeah, did you? No. Never? No. I wow. think my experience with Green Acres is Polly Shore singing the, the Green Acres theme in the movie Son, Son in Law. In law. <laughs> <laughs> They're driving him and he's in the back of the pickup truck and nice. he's singing it. That's, I think, the extent of my oh, Green, okay. Green it's Acres good. experience. Yeah. I should check it out. You should check it out. The This message will self-destruct in five seconds also was used in Pee Wee's Playhouse. Okay. It was in the Weird Science TV show in the 90s. It was on The Simpsons a couple times. It was on Veronica Mars. It's in The Incredibles, like you Which pointed we, out we in one, about. Of, uh, yeah. one of our earlier episodes. It was in an episode of Chuck and an episode of Phineas and Ferb. That does not surprise me. So that's just the mess. This message will self-destruct in five seconds. Then we can talk about just the Langley sequence in the first Mission Impossible right. movie and how that is so steeped into pop culture. I mean, it's just still being parodied right. to this day. So, I mean, back then, there was a news radio episode, which you can watch on YouTube. They have that scene uh, from news radio. It's a really funny parody yeah. of the of the whole Langley thing of, you know, you can't touch the floor and you can't. And they're, yeah. they're trying to sneak into Dave Foley's office and Andy Dick's hanging from the ceiling. It's a really funny scene. And we can post it on the Twitter. Right. Duckman. I don't know if you remember that show, Duckman. I do remember Duckman. I don't remember. It. Uh... And it's specifically like hanging from the ceiling. There's a do you remember a celebrity death match? Of course. The claymation yeah. series. They there's a Tom Cruise comes into the ring hanging from the ceiling. Who is he fighting? I don't remember. Okay. I didn't find the clip. I but was just reading the sure. description yeah, okay. and I just vaguely remembered. The Inspector Gadget movie did it. Boy Meets World, Cats and Dogs, which I'm a fan of that yeah, movie. You're a big it's fan a, of that it's movie. a spy spoof with dogs. Yeah, it's movie, great. And I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good family movie. Yeah. Buffy the Vampire Slayer did it. I think that's the TV show. Yeah, I don't remember of that, but... Uh, South Park has a really funny one in 02 where they're sneaking into this barn to try to save these veals that are going to... Oh, yeah. The, that's a <laughs> the baby cows very from funny clip. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a really funny... Um, they, and Cartman has this Mission Impossible kit yeah. on how to break in. It like, includes like a blowtorch and all these other things. It's a really funny scene. Uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, uh, The Fairly Odd Parents, Family Guy, The Princess and the Frog. What what princess? I don't remember. Toy Story Three. Well, you know that when he when uh, Woody hooks his uh, you know the string for his voice. Right. And he hooks and it he, up, and he falls, and he, fall, he, and yeah, he repels down. down. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, Tangled. Which I don't remember. They said it wasn't. I've never seen Tangled, but I was reading the description uh-huh. of it, and it wasn't the long hair. It was someone. It was a guy who was doing it, I guess. Oh, it was Flynn Rider. Yeah, he's a criminal. Okay. What did they say it was Princess and the Frog? I didn't. Re- I didn't find a description. Okay, I'll of it, find but we'll it. have to watch yeah. that. Archer in 2011, Brooklyn Nine Nine um, in 2013, Muppets Most Wanted, yeah. which you and I are big fans of. Muppets big fans Most, of Muppets Most Wanted. I think Wanted. Muppets Most Wanted is a really underrated Muppet movie. That yeah, was overlooked. Sharknado 5 did it in 2017. Always and, on top of it. And Bob's Burgers did it in 2018. Wow. So these, these Langley spoofs, I mean, it's just every year there's something new. And this isn't even all of them. These are just the ones that I thought were most significant for us to talk about. Right. And I'm sure that I couldn't even find them. This is mostly going from IMDb where they, they talk about referenced in, spoofed in. They have a whole page for that, you know, movie connections yeah. for each thing. So I was just looking up those. If you find one that we missed, please let us know. Yes, too. yes. And I want to do a shout out to, so we still haven't gotten into the mother of all spoofs, which we will in a second. But before we get there, I want to just give a shout out to Mystery Science Theater 3000, the original run of that show from 89 to 99. 
which they were spoo- you know they just watch old cheesy movies yeah. and talk over them. They did many, 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 many different references to all these different kinds of Mission Impossible lines and gags and things. And you know that show aired on Saturday nights, just like Mission just Impossible. Like, oh, well. Yeah. Learn something new every Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, and then I guess that takes us to what we should talk about, which is the best yeah. Mission Impossible parody, which we think is you know the funniest. This should be like considered an entry in the movie series. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, of course, Mission Improbable. Right. Which Ben Stiller made as a sketch as part of the MTV Movie Awards right. in, in 2000. 2000. Yeah. So, which we probably watched on TV live. Yeah, I th- we must before have. before TiVo or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, and, and it was, that was a big award show. I mean, it was sort of edgy and yeah. young and, and fun. Uh, and, it's amazing. Yeah, and Stiller had a history with, with Cruz before that yeah. of parodying him. He had appeared on SNL Celebrity Jeopardy. So, you know, they have their Celebrity Jeopardy series where Will Ferrell is Alex Trebek. Or, yeah. You know, and uh, he, so he was Tom Cruise on that. And, of course, there's a really great parody to look up to that ben, the Ben Stiller show in the early 90s did Tom Cruise Dress Casual, which was a one-man yeah. Broadway show. Where it was Stiller, like greatest hit. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Stiller is pretending to be Tom Cruise in a one-man Broadway show where he sort of goes through his whole career acting out all of the parts. I think and it helps because he looks... It kind of leads... It's a good lead-in to this Mission Improbable yeah. sketch. And then he looks a lot like Tom Cruise. He does. So, and he's got it down. Yeah. And, and he'd been working on this for 10 years, <laughs> you know, doing this... Right. The the impression. And after the sketch, he, Tom Cruise obviously starred in Tropic Thunder with right. him. Yeah. Which where, they were talking about spinning off into its own movie. I, I remember when I went to see Tropic Thunder, this was sort of at a time where Cruise was not very popular. Right. This is this was kind of a big step for him to come back into people's hearts. I yeah. think I was in the theater opening day on Tropic Thunder. And I think I knew about the Tom Cruise, or maybe when I was watching, I realized right away, oh my god, that's Tom Cruise because uh-huh. they, they tried to keep it a secret. But it was like every scene they would go to Tom Cruise, it was a packed audience, and everyone around me, you'd start to hear people whisper, be like, oh my god, that's Tom Cruise. <laughs> is that Tom Cruise? Like, it was a really amazing that's cool. theater experience where it was people were buzzing like finding out oh my gosh that, is that Tom holy crap because he just transformed himself yeah. into this weird sweaty fat movie studio executive <laughs> for Ben Stiller and it's it it's seems really like a perfect funny. time for him to come back and do this character maybe, <laughs> maybe not maybe yeah but let's talk about Mission Improbable let's I mean, talk about let's it. just talk about it itself he plays Tom Cruise Ben Stiller plays Tom Cruise spelled C-R-O-O-Z-E <laughs> So he's, his whole thesis in life is that, uh, you know, if you're a stunt double, you really have to talk like the actor right. and think like the actor and legally change your name to be similar to the actors, which is so good. Yeah. And, and they show sort of the production of Mission Impossible 2. Yeah. And, and John Woo is featured in the sketch. John Woo is really funny yeah. in the sketch. You can find it. It's still it's on YouTube and not in the best quality, but it's also on the Mission Impossible 2 Blu-ray. Yeah. So you can watch it there. Because That's... it was produced by Paramount. MTV is owned by Paramount. So this is all in-house. Right. Uh, official sort of parody yeah. stuff. Yeah. And John Woo um, has a really funny bit in it, too, where they you know, they say that there's not much use for this stunt double because Tom Cruise does all his own stunts. So, so But they find other good ways to use him. And so they just, you know, as soon as a bad guy starts punching Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise steps out and the Ben Stiller Tom Cruise steps in <laughs> and just gets punched over and over again. Right. And John Woo's like, harder. <laughs> which I love it's great it's so good my favorite is the montage of him as the stunt double in movies that don't require stunt yeah. doubles yeah the real Tom Cruise says you know even if we don't ask him to come on he still comes on to a project and we just find him there and so yeah they show clips of like cocktail, cocktail and risky business yeah, yeah of the this other Tom Cruise being an idiot over the years and it's really really it's funny it's great <laughs> it's uh it's really long it's a long sketch. Yeah. It's much longer than things would be. What is it? Six or seven minutes yeah. or something. I, I, I think when they're, 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 they're like with action figures and motorcycles, which you can see now, there's a video of Cruz planning the climax of Fallout. And he's doing it with little miniature oh, really? miniature helicopters. And it's him, like, talking with all the stunt guys right before they go out to film all the helicopters. Probably and because he's, he's the one piloting one of the yeah, helicopters. And he's, like, moving them around. It's the same thing in Mission Improbable. He's got little... And I don't know if that's how they actually did it or yeah. if it's just for the sake of the sketch. But he's got toy motorcycles and a toy version of himself and a toy version of, uh, of Sean Ambrose, the <laughs> bad guy. And he's walking through with the stunt guy what to do. And that's when Ben Stiller steps in. He's like, hey, I just got... This, this idea, you know, <laughs> just what if, like, right before you guys hit in the air, you look right into the camera and you say, This mission 
just got a hell of a lot more impossibler. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I think that's probably my favorite part. And referencing the fact that Tom Cruise kicks a lot in the climax, yeah. too. Yes, which I just finished a rewatch of Mission Impossible 2 and counted the number of kicks. And? I think we'll save it. All right. We'll save it. We're going to do a ranking impossible episode is where we talk sh- about our sh- rankings for all the sequences and characters and all these different things. And after we've really digested Fallout and think about what is our ranking for the series, we're going to do that. We're going to rank a lot of different things and we'll talk about how many kicks. Are there a lot? You might be surprised. Okay. All right. I will say this. I was expecting a lot of kicks and for the first hour and a half, there is not one. Wow. But in the last half hour... It really does become, as Ben Stiller says, kicking impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, so we'll we'll dig into that later. Do you uh, do you wonder why there have, hasn't been a follow up to this? To Mission Improbable? Yeah. Oh yeah. I feel. Like I wish I had a line to Ben Stiller because I that know. Would be like, you got to go do this. Can you? I mean, with Fallout right now. I know it would be. Can great. you imagine? Because now, now Cruz is pushed so far into this stunt. Yeah. Aspect of it, he's like Jackie. He's like Jackie Chan now. Yeah. Almost. That Stiller could really bring Tom C R O O Z E back. Yeah, I think it would be great. Man, he's got to do that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just because it feels like the second they're actually finished with the movie, they're promoting it. So maybe they don't have that kind of built in buffer time to film something like yeah. this. Yeah. But I would love to see uh, Ben Stiller and Tom Cruise. Their chemistry is so great, too. In the I know. Room. Yeah, the so, two of them together. Yeah. Finishing each other's sentences. Yeah, I mean, it's so the, funny. I think this is, I think we both agree this is the mother of all. Spoofs. Yes. And is, is a must watch for any Mission Impossible fan. Yeah. If you haven't, this is like the seventh movie. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> uh, another thing it's to what? watch before Fallout, there's a great Honest Trailers that does the first four movies. We don't agree with it because, you know, we just love these movies. Yes. But it's, it's worth But it's another at. kind of parody spoof yeah. thing. They just sort of dissect the first four movies and. It's from 2015. Yeah. Uh, it's, so right before. If you just, I think if you just Google Honest Trailers, Mission Impossible, yeah. you'll find it. Honestly, not a lot to laugh about because these movies are just so good. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Let's start. Let's get serious for a second. Yeah. Can't laugh at this stuff. No. Because it's the best. It is the best. So just cool it with the with the spoofs. Yeah. All just right. Take a few years take, off. Take take it easy. Yeah. No <laughs> Jack Reacher spoofs that I can see. People know not to mess with Jack Reacher. That's true. He'll <laughs> break your nose as quick as you <laughs> start spoofing him. Yeah. Uh, any other thoughts to wrap this up? Uh, no, I mean I think, yeah. This, even if we tried, there's no way to get all of them. That's no. just how the this show, the franchise, the old show, and the series of movies are just so ingrained in everything that it's impossible to keep track of all of it. But we just thought we'd give you a little taste and reminder of some of those spoofs maybe that you saw as a kid, or and let us know what your favorites are, and let us know which ones we missed, and yeah. we'll bring them up on a future episode. Yeah. So for Charles, this is Drew. Bye. Thanks again for listening, everyone. And before we go, another mission, should you choose to accept it, please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. And remember that you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at LightTheFusePod and email us questions or comments at LightTheFusePodcasts at gmail.com. If you'd like to watch the original Mission Impossible television show, all seven seasons are currently available to stream on Amazon Prime. This message will self-destruct in five seconds.